Hi everyone! Today I want to share this cute little card made with the new Christmas quilt stamp set and the coordinating framelit dies quilt builder framelits. I'm using a lot of papers also from the same collection and the paper is called Quilted Christmas. So it's all about the quilt patterns this time. So I want to show you how this card works. It's kind of a origami fold and it has a little belly band to keep it closed and then if you just pull from the two corners it opens into a really cute little Christmas quilt card. Now once you've got it opened once it kind of wants to fold back the way it came. But let me show you how to get here. <laughs> so it looks difficult but it's actually quite easy once you've done it and it starts Oh, you know what? I'm going to show you this really quick too. The stamp set is so fun. Lots of little quilt patterns, but the die set is adorable. You've got little triangles. You can build a tree. There's some holly berry. There's a little berry somewhere on my desk. <laughs> so you've got leaves and a little berry. But these two are fun. There isn't a stamp for them. They're little added elements. So this is a needle. Cut that out of some gray or some silver foil and you've got a cute little needle. And this is like a spool, so you can wrap some baker's twine around it and have a little spool of thread. This is a really fine little flower, and you can use just the outline. See, they work together, or the center, to make a really pretty cutout. And then these work together, too. So it's really fun, all these little elements together. I think the dies in this particular 2017 holiday catalog are amazing. Lots of fun elements. Okay and the papers. I want to show you the quilt papers. There's a lot of patterns, but this is where I got the center. So I cut it out with the framelit that you just saw, and you've got a really cute quilt without a lot of stamping. In fact, there's only one stamping element on this card. Let me tell you about all the pieces. You're going to start with a piece of 8 by 8 and then you need a belly band, and this is cut at the 11 inch, the full length of the paper, but then one and a half. And then I scored it at two and three eighths and six and five eighths. And those measurements will be at my blog. And then you need a bunch of squares. You're going to end up with a lot of two inch squares. So these are just a quarter of an inch smaller. So these are one and three quarter inch squares. And you need several in green and red or whatever color quilt you're going to make. All together, you need, I'll show you. Altogether, you need six red and six green to go all the way around your square. And then you need some little triangle ones. And this is just the same one, but just cut on a diagonal. So you need two more squares and then cut them at a diagonal. And then here I have used, I wanted that little stitching detail. So I used the Stitch Shapes Framelit dies to get this square here. Okay, so the only stamping, let's get that out of the way, is the Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas, which I have stamped in real red. And then I used some glue to add my little holly berry, leaf, holly berry leaves and um, the little berry. And I'm going to set that aside to dry. So now we're going to score our 8 by 8 square. So we're going to score, let's get that cutting blade out of the way so I don't accidentally cut, every 2 inches along the side. So 2 inches and then I want 2 inches off of this side so I'm lining it up at the 6. Two inches and I'm lining up at the six. Now we also need this line and I couldn't do it the first time because I didn't have this two inch marker but now I do so I'm going to put it at the four. 
but you don't want to score the center. So you're only going to score at the 4 until you reach that score line that we made earlier. So score to that 2 inch line. And then you're going to do the same thing at this end. Score until you reach that center line. So turn it and do the same thing until you reach that center line. I used my little pointer. The Stampin' Up! trimming blade and scores have little pointers so you can cut up to the line. And you might have some feature like that on your cutter. So now you've got two inch squares all around the side but nothing in the center. So we do need to add some scores here. Let me open that card and show you the one we're going to do now. So now we need this score line. We've got all these squares. We need this diagonal. I feel the easiest way for me to do it is with a ruler and a score and a paper piercing mat. This is like a piece of foam. It's heavy though. And if you have maybe fun foam at home from the craft store or maybe you have um, some styrofoam or something, you can use that. I love the paper pierce mats by Stampin' Up! and I have two. One I use as a mat underneath stamping and uh, scoring like I'm doing today and another one that I use for actual paper piercing and that one ends up with tons of little holes in it. See it's kind of got a million holes in it and I don't like to use that for stamping because then you might get the grooves from the holes. So I have two and I think they're, you know, it's a silly little piece of foam but it's such a great tool. So we're going to use this and how you do it, I'm going to bring the camera closer and I've got these score lines at this intersection where I made this two inch score and then I brought this center to it. So I've got a little point there, same thing all the way around. So you're going to join this line to this line. So I like to put your little foam mat underneath and use a guide that's sturdy like a ruler and put it across those two lines and then if you press lightly into your foam mat you get that score line and you need to do that on all four. So now you've got squares all around and then one on a diagonal in the center that's larger than all the others. Next you're going to want to make all those score lines flexible. So you're going to take a bone folder or some tool such as a bone folder or a good sturdy fingernail and score all those, burnish all those score lines. I'm going to speed up the video while I do that to make it go faster. Okay, I've got them all folded. Now you're just going to glue your little quilt squares. So you can kind of arrange them how you want. I thought to make it look pretty when closed, I wanted to be sure to use similar patterns across from each other for when it's closed. So I pulled out these for the ends. And then you're going to want to alternate red, green, red, green, red, green. such as that. Now just glue it all down. I'll speed up the video while I glue. Okay, isn't that a cute little quilt? I think so. Set that aside and I'm going to go ahead and glue these together. This is a 3x3 square. 
and this I cut right out of the paper. There is some fun new Christmas ribbon in the collection too and it's got that garden green and real red together and I'm going to make a little bow for the center. Okay, this is dry and I'm going to show you how to fold this. It's tricky. Um, you're going to work around in a circle, somewhat twisting as you go. And once you've folded it once and burnished it all down um, with your bone folder, it'll, it'll fold easily after that. So just bear with it and see like this one's going to want to go, it wants to pop closed. But the motion is twisting. So you start with one corner and before you get all the way up, you're going to start to bring in this one, kind of hold it with your finger. And before you get all the way up, you're kind of twisting around the square, kind of going in a counterclockwise motion. That's for me because of um, you know, different handedness. Maybe if you're left handed, you want to work the other way. But um, kind of work around the square. So here, let's show you the stiffer one. That one was easy because I've opened it and closed it so many times. Um, this one is going to be a little stiffer at first, but I'm going to show you where I put my fingers to kind of help it go. So you're going to bring this corner up, so you want that fold. So I kind of place my fingers here to help it come up. And then you're kind of pulling it to the center, but also to the side. So up and slightly over. And when it gets about there, you need to bring in this one. And you want to come from behind that triangle to make sure that's going up correctly. And you kind of want to fold this square on top of that square. So you're working in kind of a circular motion, but it doesn't want to go quite yet. So then you got to bring this one up. See how it's kind of, kind of going in a circle and bring this one up from behind that triangle. So as you're going, you're twisting and folding. There. And then when you've got it down, flip it over and go over those folds. over really well and because you want your recipient to be able to open and close it easily you know how you did it but they're not going to know how you did it so by burnishing all those folds you're going to help it to close nicely for the person you give it to all right now let's open it up okay figure out where your top is also see I had a little extra glue there so maybe I'm gonna let it sit for a moment I'm gonna um, let that dry. So we're going to figure out what the direction it's going so that when we put the belly band on, see it wants to close. We know that the belly band should go with this at the top, like this at the top, because you're going to pull from the red maybe. And you, you know, you're, again, your recipient's not going to know that. And you want, don't want to have to be there to give them instructions when it goes in the mail, right? So by putting the belly band on correctly and you've got the bow facing the right way, that's kind of going to be how they're going to naturally hold it and then they'll open it like this. See how easy it's starting to go back together? So the belly band had those score lines. Place those behind and you're going to want to bring these pieces up and around. And I recommend adhering it after you've made the card. Don't go ahead and make this while that's drying because you want to have it around the card because even though it's scored people have a tendency to make it really tight. You don't want it tightness. You want it to be a little bit, have a little give to it so that it can slide on and off the card. So go ahead and put some adhesive while it's on the card and not too tight. And then this piece here is going to cover that seam that we made in our belly band. So go ahead and add some adhesive to that and press down and it's all done. Very cute little card. It doesn't have to be for Christmas. You have probably lots of scraps of designer series paper that you can use for this. Make a baby quilt or um, a, a wedding quilt, whatever you think you might want to make. And even though the stamp set does have a Christmas set in it and piece, it doesn't have to be for that at all. You can make this for any occasion. And I love this little one here. It says, when life gives you scraps, make a quilt. That's perfect for all of us crafters, right? So I think this is a really fun set and the dies are wonderful. 
I hope you'll give this collection a look in the catalog. There's so many pieces to it. The paper, the ribbon. There are little stitched embellishments too that are just adorable. I went real simple on this one, but you can really make it elaborate. And take a look at this page, page five in your holiday catalog. And if you need a holiday catalog, let me know. And also please subscribe to my channel and come back and see me again. I would love it. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.